Please. Okay, so we've um, now loaded in the trajectory file, and here we go. So let's just make this. So this is our simulation system. And so one of the um, one of the things that, that is really crucial about visualization is just knowing what how to actually represent your system in such a way that you can understand it. So what this is here is it's the lines representation. So it's every atom in the system um, and all of the bonds represented as lines. And I think we can agree it's quite complicated and we can't see very much. So I'm just gonna explore this trajectory for a while. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I know, of course, that there's a transporter in there. And I know that there's a ligand in there and I can see that there's a membrane. So let's just start off by looking at our protein structure. So we open our BMD main here and we do graphics representations. And this, this window comes up here and there's all sorts of things to play with in this window. So um, the first thing we can do is we just want to look at the protein. So in here, I hope you can read it because it's quite small. It says selected atoms all. I'm going to change that to protein. And there you see everything that's not a protein has miraculously disappeared. So now we can see our protein. Okay, so this is it. Um, and probably we want to represent that in secondary structure representation. So graphics representations, this is the, this is our protein. So we're going to change drawing method to new cartoon. And we're going to change coloring method to secondary structure. And now we can see that our protein is made up of lot of alpha helices in the middle, these flexible disordered loops, and a flexible loop at the bottom. So this is our protein. But of course, we can't actually see the ligand yet. So let's, let's see if we can, if we can spot our, our ligand. So, graphics representations. So at the moment, I'm in a situation where I'm exploring this file and I don't really know what's in there, but I can find out, okay? So if I go to, in my graphical representations menu, if I go to selections, and then I can see that I've got all of these keywords at the bottom. And if I click on res name, then I get a list of all of the residues that are present in the trajectory. So I can see that there are the, the usual things. So there's alanine, arginine, or asparagine, all of the amino acids that you would expect. Then there's a few things that I can see are to do with the lipid membrane. So there's DPPC here, so that's a lipid. This CHL1 is also a lipid. And if I move down, I can see that I have this res name MDMA. So that is going to be my ligand. So now I know what my ligand's called. What I can do is I can create a representation. And then instead of protein, I'm going to type res name MDMA. Enter. I can't see anything yet because um, the ligand doesn't have a secondary structure representation. So I need to change the representation. And I guess my ligand is going to be quite small. So I want to pick a representation that's going to make it stand out. So I go back to draw style and I say, OK, I'm going to do coloring method. I'm going to color by atom name. And my drawing method, I'm going to colour by, I'm going to draw it by Van der Waals. And here we go. So I'm just going to change. So just 
I can change from perspective to orthographic. That's probably a bit better. And zoom in. And here is our ligand. Here it is. And you can see that it's, it's really buried inside this transporter, which is what you would expect, because of course, with it being a transporter, this thing has got to get in and it's got to get out again. So, okay, so what we're now going to do is we're going to look and see how these two molecules move during Michelle's wonderful stimulation. So we go to VMD main and then we can do play and we can see the whole thing wiggles around and we can see the ligand moving in the binding pocket. And you'll notice that the ligand is called MDMA and it really is MDMA. It is the, the molecule that is the drug ecstasy. So what Michelle's interested in in these simulations is um, the behavior of these psychoactive substances with respect to the, to the dopamine channel. So these are, are very fascinating simulations. Okay, so this is looking great. We can see our protein moving around. This trajectory spans 250 nanoseconds. Because it's for slim MD, it's been slimmed down. So each snapshot is about, um, it's sampled about every 100 nanoseconds. So we've got like, um, sorry, every nanosecond. So it, it, we've got about 200 structures in here, I think. Okay, so now because it's moving around so tortuously, I'm going to do something to make it easier to look at. So graphics representations again. Now we go to um, the trajectory tab. And in here, you can see that it's got this trajectory smoothing window. And so if I just smooth it, I don't know if you can see, I'm going to zoom in. You can see that now that, that just for the ligand, the dynamics has been smoothed out so that it's a bit easier to look at. And now we're going to do the same for the protein. I can click on the protein structure and we can smooth it. And now it's a lot easier to see what's going on. So let's just zoom out. So if we watch the trajectory, we can see that, as we might expect, the centre of the protein that's made up of lots of alpha helices is relatively stiff. But these loops up here are extremely dynamic. But this isn't wobbling around in space as much as I would expect for something that looks like this. Um, but, of course, we're not surprised about that because something's missing from the visualisation we haven't yet got the lipid membrane. So now we want to put the membrane back in. Okay, so let's create a new representation. And this is going to be not, so we just want the membrane. So not protein and not resname, MDMA. And we're going to have to change the draw style. Let's do something straightforward. Let's color it by name. And let's make this lines. Wow, here we go. So here, here's the lipid membrane put back in. And we're going to smooth that because it's, that's better. So now we can see the protein in the center and all of the lipid molecules on the outside. Now, I'm no expert in membranes, so this is one area of expertise that, that, um, that I don't, I'm more of a nuclear catalyst person. So, so one of the things that I might be interested in, because I don't know a lot about lipids or membrane protein or, or the, the composition of, of membranes, is I might want to know, well, you know, how many different types of lipids? has Michelle got in here and how has she constructed her bilayer? So one of the ways which I can do that, let's just stop the thing, okay. Graphics representations. So this is my line that gives me the, um, the membrane, not protein and not resname MDMA. 
So I'm going to go to the draw style and instead of colouring it by name, which colours each individual atom in accordance with whether it's a hydrogen, an oxygen, etc, etc, I'm going to make this colour by res name. And now all of the lipids with the same name are coloured in the same way and this is going to give us a now we're going to be able to see what what the composition of our membrane is and it's really complicated right um, so here's our transporter here's our membrane and you can see that there are quite a few different species in here and the other thing you can see that's very interesting is that the top um, layer of the membrane is not the same as the bottom the layer of the membrane, so it's it's asymmetric, which is very very beautiful. Okay, so we can also now another representation I like to I like to use to get a feel for the texture of biomolecules is we can go name graphics representations. So here, instead of representing this as lines, I'm going to be quite brave and I'm going to represent this as quick, sir. Now, just a note of caution to everybody. So in BMD, you've got the option to represent things as a surface. And what it does is it rolls a, a hypothetical sphere over the surface of the biomolecule and so it gives you this idea of a, a van der Waals surface. But the actual surface, which is a couple of options down from where I am now, that is very, very, very expensive. And if you click on that one, it might freeze your computer. So I do recommend QuickSur for dynamics because the surface one is, is quite slow. OK, so QuickSur. And I'm going to change this to, um, I just want something else. I'm going to change our representation to charge. And then if I play this, then we get a feel for the protein pore in the center, the oily membrane, and we can just see the ligand, the MDMA, in there. We can also see two other things. So here's our ligand, this is our protein, this is our membrane, and I can see two other atoms in here that I wasn't expecting. So I now want to identify what those atoms are. So I'm going to zoom out, I'm going to go back to my main, I'm going to stop the simulation from running, I'm going to get rid of this surf, the, the, the membrane just by double clicking on that so it disappears. And now I'm going to look for those other residues that I couldn't quite see. Oh, I know what's happened here. Okay, I'm going to have to turn this back on again because, um, okay. So I can see them, but can I guess at them? Okay, so here are these two other atoms that I don't know what they are. So if I click on one and click, um, let's go for van der Waals, might make it easier. So if I click on one and then click on my unidentified atoms, that's going to tell me what they are. So I can see for this one, I press one on my keyboard and clicked on my atom. I can see. There's a label here, SOD, that's sodium. So this thing here is a sodium ion. And then what I can do, I can go to graphics labels and I can see that I've clicked on this sodium here and it tells me all sorts of things about it. So it tells me the residue ID, it tells me the X, Y, and Z coordinates, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I can use my little clicking tool when I press one and I click, it tells me the identity of a particular atom and I can use that to identify anything that I didn't expect to see in the simulation. And that's going to be useful for you later on in the BMD tutorial. So I just want to demonstrate um, one more thing. 
Um, so if I just get rid of all of these, just tidy myself up a bit, and let's get rid of this label. So graphics labels, don't want those, so I'm going to delete those on that one. Okay, now let's switch this one off. Okay, zoom in. So we've got a simpler representation now. And I just want, so I'm going to press two and I'm going to click on two arbitrary positions. So I clicked on this baleen at the, so I clicked on basically the, the, the first and the last residue. And because I press two, that's going to give me a bond length. If I press one, that gives me the identity of an atom. If I press two, that gives me a bond length. If I, when I click on two atoms, if I press three and then clicked on three atoms, I can measure an angle. If I press four and clicked on four atoms, I can measure a dihedral. But here I've clicked two, I've clicked on two atoms, and this gives me the distance between methionine one, C alpha, valine 620, the C alpha, and this distance here is in angstroms. And if I now um, play the simulation, you'll see that this distance changes as a function of time. And I can do graphics labels. If I click down here, I can get bonds. I can click on this and I can do um, graph, and this pops up a graph that tells me how that distance changes as a function of time. So that is a very, very quick tour of VMD. So the things to remember are that you can type in things like res name val and I can make everything um, I can make all of the valines band vowels and I can make all of them for example if I go to color ID I can make them all lime green um, so this is how we select things and um, pull things out of the structure so that we can visualize them. We can measure distances, angles if we want to. We can also visualize the hydrogen bonds. So I can do in the protein, create rep, um, hydrogen bonds, um, coloring method. I like hydrogen bonds to be yellow. And those lines, let's just make them a bit fatter. So these yellow lines are all of the hydrogen bonds in the protein. And if we press play, we can see they differ on that. Okay, so 